Today, we're going to be taking a look at a number of tips that are going to help you get better looking websites. That little 5% of tweaking that gets the end result to look 100% better. So, if this is something you're interested in, stick around and I'm going to show you all those tips right now. When it comes to web design, that final 5% of polish is the thing that can make all the difference. That can be the separator between a client coming back unhappy and a client going away incredibly pleased. And in this video, I want to share some tips with you that will show you how you can just take those little refinements and make your web design just a little bit more pro. So if this is something that interests you, let's stick around and take a look at all those tips. Well, my name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and this is the channel where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. So, let's take a look at the first tip. Now, while not everybody likes minimalism, providing a simple and clean style in your web design will help maintain that professional appearance. Now, this is one of those key areas that newbies can be guilty of, especially when it's incredibly easy to become overwhelmed with the extensive choices available. Try to keep your typography styles to a maximum of three throughout your entire site. Now, this will help differentiate the key aspects of your content. So, for example, you can choose a consistent style for your headings, one for your body content, and a third, if necessary, for highlighting important information on the page. So, let's take this example. You can see we've got a heading, we've then got some italicized text. We've got a different style of font for the heading in the next section in a different color. And finally, we've got a fourth different kind of style then for the content. It all just looks a little bit of a mishmash. But if you take your time and effort to really craft those fonts and the color scheme together, you just end up with something that's a little bit more consistent. So this is where I'm looking at as a kind of a bad example. But if we just take a look at using some simple examples where we streamlined it, you can see we've now got a consistency of color consistency of font style and font sizes, and everything just looks that little bit more professional. And when you're presenting information in narrow columns, try to avoid using too many words. Just cut it to the key message and strip out all that unnecessary waffle. It's much better for design aesthetic as well as the reader's attention. So jumping over to our example again, you can see we've got these three columns and a lot of text that's underneath it. Now that makes it difficult for the end user to read and a little bit sort of unwieldy. People won't generally sit a tent to spend too much time reading this amount of information. If you can strip it down to the key information, you're going to get a much better chance that the end user is going to read what you're putting out there. So just we take a look at this other example, you can see we stripped out the excess, got the key message is going to be in there, and it makes it much easier and much cleaner from both the design aesthetic and from a user's point of view. So when you superimpose text over a background image, it's worth giving a little bit of thought to what you're trying to achieve. Making sure that you use good contrasting colors and an overlay will definitely help your message stand out. So for example, you can see we've got this image, we've got white text, gray text over it, a drop shadow. It all just looks a little bit too much going on. So we can rectify that very, very easily just by using a background overlay and then using some thought with the color of the fonts that we use over the top of it. So we go back to our example. This is with this background overlay, white text, and everything just cleaned up a little bit. You can get the benefit of the image as well as the text being clear. Also, it's worth considering if you are doing something like this where you overlay text onto an image, make sure that the text doesn't obscure the image or vice versa, so you end up with being something that's just very difficult to read. White space is basically giving your elements on the page room to breathe. So never underestimate the power of white space. It's not only used to allow your content to breathe, but to create a natural sense of separation in your design. So using white space to draw attention to your headings, your important messages, or your visual structure. So again, using our example, you can see we have next to no white space separating all the different elements. We've got the three different boxes with minimal white space between each of the columns and minimal white space between the headings and each of the following sections. So everything looks like it runs together. So with just a little extra white space, something as simple as 50 pixels above and below, you get a much cleaner, much easier, and much more uniform design. So again, let's take our example page where we've added that in, and you can see everything now has breathing space and a natural flow 
easily guiding the eye through the actual content of your page. Now speaking of spacing, it's also worth considering consistent spacing. Now, if your content carries equal importance, avoid using inconsistent spacing above and below your content blocks. A balance here can help show a natural page structure and flow and convey a sense of importance. So again, using this example, you can see we have inconsistent spacing in our different sections and everything just looks a little bit disjointed. If you take your time to ensure that you add that structure, you'll see that having this consistent spacing just opens things up and gives that visual hierarchy just that little bit more chance to shine through. So remember, white space to give you set your content space to breathe, and then consistent spacing to make sure everything looks nice and evenly balanced. So ensure that you use the right size fonts to show a visual hierarchy of your content. Don't try confusing your visitors with headings that are too small or too large and ensure that your most important headings are larger than their less important counterparts. Now, this provides a clear message as to what is the most important heading on your page and leads the viewer through a natural visual structure. So as an example, you can see we've got the festival, which is a heading, and if we scroll down, we've got the news section, which is much larger. So that kind of leads you to think that the festival news is more important than the information about the festival, whereas in this example, they're equally important. So making sure that you have a font that's the same size there will work better and show in a visual fashion that they are equally as important. Also, obviously, if you have something that's more important, it should be larger. So to go back and show you my example, if we take a look at the rectified page, you can see the festival and the festival news are both equally important and equally sized. So bear that in mind, your visual hierarchy can be emphasized by using the right size fonts in the right locations. Now when it comes to titles, ensure that you use the right size font to convey the message. It's very easy for things to become unbalanced if you use too small or too large fonts. Also, ensure that you have concise sentences that convey a message as opposed to bore the user. So for example, you can see we've got this subheading underneath on our hero image. It's all just a little too small. Conversely, if we scroll down, you can see we've got the second heading, which there's just too much information there. If anyone's landing on this, they know where the festival is. If this section is just about the festival itself, then keep it concise. So again, jumping back to our example, you can see we've got the font enlarged to make it visually interesting and easier to read and also show and convey the fact it's an important message. And if we scroll down to our subheading, you can see the festival is more than enough and it cleans that section up and allows the text that's underneath it to convey the additional information that might be required. So remember, keep those titles short and concise and ensure that your fonts display the right kind of size and styling to get the information across in the quickest and easiest fashion. Now it's fine to use center text for short sections but try to avoid using it on longer articles as it makes it incredibly difficult to read, especially if you're also using long paragraphs. Now keep a center text for headings, ensuring that all your headings are centered for consistency. Pull quotes or short sections that you want to draw attention to. But if you take a look at this example where we've got long paragraphs, all centered, it does make it incredibly difficult to read. So just bear that in mind. Now, as with the temptation to use too many fonts that can unbalance a design, so can the use of too many colors. Creating a simple color palette for your design will help you create a more consistent design. Now, choosing one or two key colors for your design will help convey a clear visual message. If you need to introduce more colors, choose complementary colors that accentuate the primary color, but use them sparingly. Now, there's some excellent free resources available online to help create the perfect color scheme for your project. Look at things like Adobe Color CC. And if you have an Adobe account, you can also save your color palette and share that across all your Adobe apps, which is perfect for multifaceted projects. Now, as an example, you can see I've used different colors for the headings, different colors for different sections of the site. And while in some instances this may work, generally as a rule of thumb, it just looks a little bit amateur. So keeping that consistent color palette will definitely help keep a consistency and a professional element across your entire design. Now it's very tempting to create a menu that's overloaded with links, contact details, social media icons, and more. 
Now think of your visitor having to wade through all of those items just to get what they want. Instead, clean up your navigation, create a clear, simple and well-structured experience that highlights the most important information. So there we go. Some tips to help you take your websites from being average to being much more professional. Hopefully what is demonstrated is it's very easy to add that final 5% to make all the difference. This is the kind of thing that can separate your design from being average to being exceptional. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified every time new content is added. If you have any comments, questions or feedback or tips that you've found that you think help, please pop those in the comment section below. Let's share that with everybody. We can all benefit from getting much better looking web design. Well, my name is Ian Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care. Woohoo! Got a good click!